Hi everyone. This is a quick tutorial on setting up the new OSC features in my VP Studio template. Uh, right now you're looking at on the uh, left the OSC uh, control app and on the right is uh, my Unreal screen. And you'll see when I touch this uh, top screen button, replica of the, International the screen Space flies Station, down where we can and the volume comes up. In the I can lower the, the volume Station. manually like this and bring we'll it back up again. We have spent and so when I touch the screen button again, the, the screen flies up and the volume automatically fades down for me. And you can see that the screen button lights up to tell me whether the screen is up or down. Now you can see the screen of my iPhone on the left and the screen of the editor for the OSC control app on the right. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, the app itself you can has a setup page that tells you uh, basically what screen is running and uh, you can see what your phone's IP address is and everything from here. And you can load new screen configurations. Uh, that's pretty well covered by the uh, Hex or Touch OSC app documentation, so I'm not going to try and cover that all here. Uh, but I will show you briefly how the controls are set up. Uh, you can see now if I click on this button for screen one, uh, you can see it's named screen one. There's a size for it and a color. And the important thing is right here uh, where it says what the uh, name of the button actually is. And you can see here it says one slash screen one. And then screen two is one slash screen two. Screen three is one slash screen three and so on. Um, the volume control sliders are similarly named. And uh, that's the most important thing really is uh, th these names that you see over here are the names that your Unreal app is going to be looking for when you want to send a message from the phone to Unreal or from Unreal to the phone. The only other thing that's kind of important to know is over on the setup screen of the phone app, I'll go in to the connection screen here. What you want to know is the IP address of your PC and you can see that listed under host, the incoming and outgoing ports you're going to use, and the IP address of your phone which is the last entry on this page. Uh, now all of these things can potentially change on you depending on how your home network works. Uh, I'm not going to try and tell you how to fix that. I don't have a good fix for that other than just checking the, the uh, uh, IP addresses and, and setting them up every time you get ready to go. Usually on most networks they stay the same for a while. Okay, now we're back in the Unreal Editor looking at a piece of the uh, VP Studio project. In this case I've got a piece of the player controller up on the screen. Now I want to tell you right off that I'm not going to attempt to build the entire OSC control system on the screen here for you because it's pretty complicated. But I will show you the key pieces so that you can figure out how it works by looking at the VP Studio project. And I'll show you how to set up these uh, new features so that you can actually use them in your own projects. So the first thing here is this little bit of blueprint we're looking at that shows how you set up the OSC uh, send server and client so that you can send and receive OSC messages. Uh, this is run when uh, you do your event begin play uh, and you'll find it in my VP player controller object inside of uh, VP Studio. So the first thing you need to do is create a server and that's, this is all you need to do that. Uh, you'll need to know the port number that your uh, phone is going to send to that I showed you earlier. Um, and uh, when you've created the server, it'll store the server in a variable inside of the player controller. The second thing you do is create a client, which is what you use to send to your phone. Uh, and this is again the same um, port number that you can find inside the phone. And then the OSC client address is the IP address of your phone, which can change. And once the OSC client is created, we save a reference to that and we create an OSC message which we'll use later on inside the player controller and save that as well. Now if we look just below this in the VP Studio player controller blueprint we'll see an example of how you receive a message. First thing you need to do is 
take the string that represents the button, like I showed you earlier, and convert that to an OSC address with this blueprint node here. Then we do a bind event on OSC pattern matches path, and that means that if it gets a message that matches this, it will fire this event. And in this case, I'm going to cause it to do a screenshot. So I've got an event here called screenshot. Uh, and the execute path comes out of that, prints something to the screen so that I know it received the message. Then it just executes a console command called shot, which takes a screenshot and prints another string that says the shot was taken. This input action screenshot down, down here is uh, set up so that if you press a keyboard key, you can also take a, a screenshot. This is the pretty much the standard pattern for binding any button on your controller uh, over to an OSC action on Unreal. Now we're still in VP Pillar controller, but this is a simple example showing how to send a message back to your phone to make the uh, buttons or sliders do something. In this case, we're updating the camera one and camera two buttons to show which camera is currently selected. So we're actually sending two messages. The first one up here updates the camera one button. The second one updates the camera two button. Now these are both pretty much the same, so I'll just talk about the beginning one here, the first one. So again, we convert the string that we want to send a message to this time, which is one slash one slash camera one, uh, into an OSC address. We clear out this temporary OSC message that I have uh, created earlier. Then we set the message address to the, o the, the OSC address we created here. Then we add a float, which is the state of the camera, zero or one, to the message. And then we simply send the message. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now we're looking at the blueprint for the flying screen object that I used in the eSports demo. You can see it's pretty complicated looking, but actually it's not too hard to understand. And uh, luckily you don't actually have to understand how it works in order to use it. But I'm going to give you a quick look at how it works anyway. So when the uh, blueprint starts, it comes in event begin play, and I do a short delay. Uh, the purpose of this is to make sure the player controller is completely initialized before this stuff runs. Then I go up in here, and the first thing I do is I make an, a message to use locally inside this flying screen actor. Uh, then I go to the player controller uh, and uh, get the OSC client reference and server reference and store those two locally here also. This just saves me from having to do this bunch of things every single time I want to send a message. Um, then I bind the command to make the screen move up and down. Uh, this is done in the same way. Uh, I've got the actual text of the command uh, in this in a variable over here, which you have to set. Um, that's so that you can easily have three or four of these things out in the world, and you can customize each one as you drag them out and put them in your uh, in your map. Map. So you can see basically what it does is it takes the um, like before it takes the string, uh, converts it into an address, binds the address comes down here and fires this event when it receives this message. And in this case, it calls an uh, interface called do movement, which is another part of uh, this flying screen actor. Um, it's done as an interface so that other things can call it to make the screen move besides just the OSC messages. Um, this second block here binds the OSC command to set the volume on the screen, uh, and it works almost exactly the same as above. Now what else is going on in here? Um, also over here on startup, we open the media player source and we open the sound player and set all that stuff up so that the uh, sound and video will be playing from the time that the, everything starts. You might want to modify this so that you can actually start and stop the video. Uh, I'll get to that eventually. And then another thing that I've got going on down here at the very bottom, there's a custom event called update OSC. 
Um, this is something that I call from several places. And what it does is it sends messages to update the current volume level and uh, to send the screen position and other things back to uh, OSC. This makes sure that the sliders and buttons on your uh, phone match what's going on in Unreal. You just need to call this custom event each time something changes. And the last thing here is this big block of blueprint in the middle. Uh, this handles the, the actual movement. You can see it comes in. It decides whether the screen is already moving or not and handles things differently depending on whether it's moving or not. Uh, it actually uses a timeline, which I'll explain later, to animate the motion of the screen. And it also uses this to drive the sound volume up and down. It also has a special uh, setting in the automatic volume control so that uh, if you've manually changed the volume of the screen uh, when you automatically go up and down, there won't be a big jump in volume when the motion starts. So the nice thing about these new blueprints I've provided you is you don't really have to understand entirely how they work just to use them. I'll show you how. So we'll start with a flying screen. I'll just drag one of those right here <clears throat> and position it a little bit. Probably need to flip it around sometimes so that you can actually see the screen because it's only visible from one side. And I'll move it forward just a bit. There we go. Okay. Now to use the flying screen, you're going to need a source of video. I made a little directory here called Video Streams, and it's got a couple of uh, objects in it already. Uh, these are just the video sources, and I'll show you how you make one of these. You go down to Media, and in, if you wanted to do it from a local file, you click on File Media Source. And there's another one further down that is a stream media source you can use for things that are streamed from the Internet. Uh, I'm not going to use this one because I don't want to have to type in the file name right here live. <clears throat> Here's an example of two of them already set up. This one has the address of a file I want to play. And this other one has the address on the internet of something I want to play. Now we need to create a media player to play the video. So we come up here and we choose under media, media player. And you'll get this pop up that says you want to create a video texture for it. So you say yes. And then there's a quick trick to make it, make it create a material for you. You can just drag this texture onto an object in your scene, and then you can hit undo, and it's created a texture that you can use later. Now we have to set up the flying screen object so that it'll play all this for you. Uh, you can see I've already selected it over here. One of the things you want is this motion vector. This shows tells the uh, actor how to move when you put the screen away or put it back down. In this case, I've got it set up to go up 400 centimeters when I uh, close the screen up. So it'll just fly up into the ceiling. Uh, you have to tell it what OSC messages control it. And in, in this case, it'll be volume one and screen one. Then you need to drag the media player you're going to use over here and the media source, which will be internet video for this one. And finally, you have to go into the static mesh and take the material we made a minute ago and drop that on that. And now we should be pretty much ready to go. Hello. I'm NASA astronaut Jessica Newman. So now I've started everything I up in the editor, and you can see the video is already playing. If I touch the uh, button to control the screen, it will fly up into the ceiling. Touch it again, it flies back down. The sound fades in and out automatically, or you can control it manually like I just did. You can have as many of these flying screen objects in the world as you like. Uh, you just need to make a new media player and uh, all that for each one. You can also use any mesh you like to be the TV screen. All you need to do is replace the static mesh here in the flying screen with something. Right now I've got it just as a plane, 
but it could just as easily be a, a mesh like a, that looks like a TV set. And uh, then you would just take the uh, texture and drag it onto the screen of the TV set and you'd be ready to go. The other OSC controllable thing I've added is a flying logo controller. I call this a controller because it's not a complete actor. It just controls other actors. So you can see the sample level already has a 3D text logo in it for eSports tonight. And that's just using the new text 3D plugin and then adding a text 3D character transform to it. Uh, there's already a really nice tutorial on the Unreal website about how to use this, so I'm not going to go into that. Um, basically, you just need to set it up, get the text in it, and get it formatted the way you want. And then you'll apply one of my controllers to it to make it move. And here's the way you do that. Uh, start by dragging the flying logo controller out into the world. It can go anywhere because it's not going to be visible. The next thing you need to do is select which actor it's going to control. And I've just got the one text 3D actor out there right now, so I'll select that. Now we have to set up the um, sound and the motion that we're going to use. So the motion comes from down in the text 3D actor, the text 3D character transform, which is documented on the Unreal site pretty well. Uh, you can see here I've got location enabled and I've got a location distance. This is just the amount that you want it to move uh, when you change the progress. Same thing for rotate. This is the amount I want it to rotate. Now what actually controls and plays all this is the flying logo controller. And here's the blueprint for it. Uh, it's not too complicated. Uh, it does some of the same OSC stuff that I mentioned earlier where it binds an event to an action. Uh, so the only thing you really have to be concerned with are the parts you may need to customize. First thing is the sound that you want. You need to set up here. You can select any sound you want. I selected one of the sample sounds out of the uh, Unreal Editor. The other thing are the timelines, which I also used in the flying screen to control the screen position. These were all pre-set up for you, but just in case you want to change them, I'll show you how. You double click on one, and this shows exactly what it's, was, what's happening in the timeline. Basically, it starts here at zero and goes to seven and changes in a straight line from zero to seven. You can also change these so that they move in a curve or any way you like. Timelines are also pretty well documented on the Unreal site, so I'd suggest you look at them there. But basically, they're just a way of creating a curve that is animated over time and outputs a value like a float. Uh, then in both the flying screen and the flying logo, I use one of those floats to control the position of the screen as it moves from one spot to another. So now that everything is set up, I'll show you how it works. Uh, I've pulled the camera back here so that we can see the start position for the logo. You'd normally put this somewhere off screen. And then when you press the button to cause it to play, you get the sound triggered and the motion. And to avoid copyright issues, I'm just using one of the sounds that comes with Unreal. Uh, so it's not exactly the right length for this animation, but you get the idea. So hopefully now you'll be able to use the flying logo and flying screen actors that I've built for you. If you have any questions or problems doing it, please leave messages in the comments under the video. As the release of VP Studio is shipped, it's already set up to play that NASA internet video and to move the eSports Night logo around. All you have to do is have a Touch OSC app to send it the commands to make it move. I use the Hexler Touch OSC app, which is available for Android and iPhone, and only costs about $5. There are other OSC apps that run in browsers uh, or in other apps on other types of devices. You can feel free to use pretty much any one you want. All of them send the same kind of messages that this should be able to understand. That's pretty much uh, all for this tutorial. You'll find a few useful links in the description of the video. And as usual, just let me know if you have problems.